Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bike Social. Please say hello to the 2021 Royal Enfield Meteor 350. And in this video, I'm gonna be riding it and I'm gonna be talking to a man who knows all about it. So all the details and the riding are coming up soon. So here we have the Royal Enfield Meteor 350. So it's a new model for 2021. In fact, it's a brand new model uh, from the ground up, seems to be the in phrase. Uh, it means that every component on a, of it is brand new. Um, Royal Enfield have kept the essence of what the Thunderbird, the outgoing sort of older 350 single was all about uh, by creating this. So yes, it's A2 compliant. They call it a cruiser, very uh, simple bike and it's priced at sub £4,000. And I reckon it could be the next best customizable Royal Enfield. So it's the first new Royal Enfield for a couple of years since the Interceptor and the uh, Continental GT, the 650 Twins, came out. And I reckon it's gonna hit the sweet spot for the, the younger, the newer, the less experienced, perhaps even the shorter riders, or uh, maybe as a second bike, or. Uh, for those who have been riding for ages but uh, fancy something a bit easier um, as they get on a bit in life. It's, it's almost electronic free, it hasn't got an IMU, it hasn't got cruise control or heated grips or launch control or any of that. It's really, really simple. So on first glance you, you reckon it was sort of designed for the Asian markets. Not necessarily true, they say. It's a, you know, it's a European model and it's developed uh, here in uh, Bruntingthorpe at their research and development centre or technical centre at uh, but also in Chennai in India. 349cc single overhead cam air oil cooled motor. Emission 5 of course. Really well put together isn't it? Look at all that detail. Sort of feet forward position, riding position, nice big wide seat. Uh, what is it? 765mm twin shot. Adjustable for preload. Single disc of course on the back pillion seat pegs. You've got a centre stand. You've got the tan seat on this supernova version. There's three versions. Uh, you've got a single disc on the front. There's Bybree calipers. That's a big windscreen. So they're a wallet friendly bike. It's uh, so unintimidating. It's really well put together. So there's three versions. You've got the Fireball, the Stella, and the Supernova. The base one's the Fireball. That's available in yellow or red. Uh, I say yellow or red, it literally is just the tank and then there's, they've got some um, wheel tape on that particular model. The Stella, you can get in red, blue or black and that comes with uh, an additional, the pillion backrest. And then this is the Supernova, which gets the backrest and the windscreen and the tan seat and the chrome badge. So the, the price difference is the, the Fireball starts at 3749. Stella is 3829. And then the, uh, this, the top spec Supernova is 3909. Can't believe it's less than £4,000. They haven't got any PCP prices available just yet as we're filming this. Uh, that comes next week. 20.2 brake horsepower at 6,100 RPM. And uh, peak torque is 27 Nm, which is just a shade at a 20 pound foot. That's a 4,000 RPM. And it picks up nicely on the throttle. It's, um, you know, it's all about those low revs, light clutch action. It's got the old heel and toe uh, gear, gear lever to prevent you from scuffing your brogues. So you only ever use, you know, downward shift either on the front or the back, up and down. Do about 70 miles an hour, comfortably. Back when downhill, you get a bit more. It's got a balancer shaft in that engine. So you can have your share of solo cylinder thumpiness, but there isn't that many vibes going on. So you can tell when you, um, you know, you look in the mirrors and it's, it's uh, clear and easy to see. The switch gear is really neatly put together. And then you've got your Royal Enfield clocks with your LCD. Let me just uh, turn that on there. So you got your odometer, time, gear, and your fuel gauge plus your speed. And then you can use this button here. It's the information button just to flick between, toggle between your trip A, trip B, and your overall odometer. And this is called the Tripper. It's a sat nav. You hook up to your phone. Uh, I download the Tripper app, and then it gives you a turn by turn. It's powered by Google. There's your start button. Oh yeah. It's like it barely fires with some tick over, isn't it?
And then we move down and we get these. There's 19 inch front, 17 inch rear. And these tires are from an Indian firm called Seat, C-E-A-T. And they were developed uh, in conjunction with Royal Enfield. So they made them specifically for the bike. 19 front, 17 rear. And actually they're mega. They're really, really good. Uh, I've had no problem with them. I mean, we came across a fair bit of gravelly roads on our uh, on our press ride just now and uh, you know they handled it really really well you you have you know, got hero blobs on there and you'd have to be a, a proper hero to get those pegs down and um, despite the uh, uh, lack of apparent ground clearance um, you'd have to be pretty brave to get those pegs down you know all right shall we ride I'm joined now by Mark Wells. Mark, thank you for joining me. Mark, you're the Global Head of Product Strategy and Industrial Correct, Design. Correct, that's right, yeah. The, the most pretentious job title, I think, in the industry. Your business card must be about that it big. Is. Yeah, absolutely it is. <laughs> First question really is why? Why do we need a, a 350 single in the, well, obviously we're gonna talk about the European market, but I appreciate that it's a, a global bike for a global brand and you've got a big footprint there in Asia, haven't you? So Absolutely. why did you want a 350 single to, to kind of come into your product range? So, I mean, obviously 350 singles make up the, the biggest part of our sales globally. Um, you know, currently today we, we sell more 350 singles than I think any other brand in the world. And and, uh, and, and obviously the, the products like the Bullet, the Classic and the Thunderbird have been the mainstay of our, our, our product stable. Um, and so with this, you know, this was, was always intended as a, um, as a, an evolution of the Thunderbird, to take the Thunderbird forward, but, but something that we could take to a global market. So um, I think in Royal Enfield, we have the, quite an interesting, quite a unique position in that we, we build bikes um, that make sense in our domestic home market in India, but also on, on a global stage. And, and, and we have the advantages of, of scale, um, which means that we can offer a really great value proposition um, and we can appeal to, to consumers in different marketplaces that are maybe different demographics or different positions but they all kind of love that universal same thing about bikes you know that that authentic simple honest um experience that comes with, with bikes and so you know with the the thunderbird um we'd established this this market in india predominantly for uh, a easy cruiser a bike that you could ride every day in in um you know in the thick of, of delhi or chennai traffic uh, which is you know like the craziest video game you've ever ridden in i mean it's it's amazing um so you know it, it changes direction it handles it stops it breaks um but also gives you that that big bike cruiser look and feel and image it doesn't feel toy like it doesn't feel like a pretend small bike it feels like a proper full-scale bike um but that also then makes exactly the same amount of sense if you live in, you know, Shoreditch or Barcelona, or, or you know, and you, you want a bike that you can use, um, you know, to, to, to get around in an urban setting. Um, but also something that you can take out and use and, and, and do a bit of distance with as well. And so, you know, it it kind of just makes sense for so many different places and, and so so many different markets. And, and for us, I think that evolution, that 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 level up. And that level of refinement, I think, is what, what the, the, the meteor is all about, really. Do you refer to it as a direct replacement for the Thunderbird, but, but sort of Euro 5 and then it gave you the opportunity to refine much of the, or many of the engine components, and then the rest of the bike itself, too? Absolutely. So, I mean, it's a whole new ground-up motorcycle. There's, there's nothing carryover um, other than the kind of the spirit, the essence. Um, but yeah, absolutely, it was, it was an opportunity for us to, to start with a clean sheet of paper and, and really look at all the things that made the Thunderbird great and, and created these huge communities, especially in India, around that product. Um, but also, how do we take that globally? How do we, you know, and, and, and the, the new Meteor name was, was part of, you know, reflected that idea that we wanted to go global with it. And so, you know, we sat down and looked at the things that were great about it, the, the comfort, the riding position, the image, and then the things that we could refine, the things that we could make better. So, you know, we've, we've 
we've added a, there's a balancer shaft in the engine now so that the whole thing feels much more much smoother much more refined we've worked on on all of the kind of the key touch points so you know really pleased with and proud of things like the switch cubes details like the fuel filler cap the instrument cluster um, you know some of the, the the new additions things like the, the tripopod are all things that really add to the the, the quality and the, the the that perception of refinement you know that has taken it all up that, that next notch it's got a lot of heritage about it it's got the the modern touches as well in the in the uh, onboard footage that we when we rode early I, I, I definitely i certainly mentioned the likes of the switch gear uh, and but the feeling of of the quality of the engineering that's gone into it as well i mean developing that engine despite it being you know an existing capacity and yeah. uh, amount of cylinders it's actually it's a whole new thing like you said and that must have taken a while to, to get absolutely. to where it is absolutely we we, we started this project back in 2015 and so you know there's been a huge amount of work and and this product although it's a, a lower price point than the twins it's gone through exactly the same what we call DVP which is the um, design validation process so it's had all the same level of testing it's done the same rigor that we implemented on the twins and that, that gave us that that you know obviously the twins were a big step up for us and this is just another level on that that progression on that story so you know and as you say that the it's the attention to detail on this that I think I'm, I'm most proud of. It's the refinement that we've got into it. So, like you mentioned, the, the, the switches on the switch cube. You know, we could have just done a conventional toggle switch, but we we wanted something that was quite unique, and we 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 looked. We took inspiration from the old sort of Bakelite switches you get on headlights, or the old um, the advanced and retard levers you get on, on old bikes, and um and we we wanted that on the switches. We wanted that that kind of feel, and that there was a bit of resistance to that at first. You know, a lot of people said. Oh, why do we need to do it like that? That people will be confused, but actually it works really intuitively and it just adds that little bit of extra something that is uniquely Royal Enfield. And, and I think for us, that's a really big thing is, is trying to come up with things that, that are unique and that, that, are, that, are, that, are, that kind of speak of, of who we are as a brand effectively. From a consumer side or a customer side, um, a lot of first impressions with a bike are, are made by looking at a few specs here and there. Uh, 20 horsepower, I think, is, is probably what a lot of people will look at and think, hmm, that's not very much. And how, how do you sort of compete against that? Yeah, and I, I take the point entirely. I think it's a, it's a fair point. I think the first thing is is that this isn't a bike that's about the specs. It's definitely not a spec sheet bike. It's about the, the, the sum of the whole and the experience. And I think the bike market's changed here in Europe as, 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 as well as in other markets. It's changed a lot in the last 10 years. And I think people are looking for products that are more simple, more about the experience. They're not about numbers. They're about getting on the bike and riding it. This bike is it's great at highway speeds. It sits happily at, 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 you know, at the speed limit. There's no problem with it at all. You can sit and cruise all day long at that speed. It's perfect for urban environments. You know, if you're in, in the center of London, I mean, don't get to the big city these days. You know, it's all locked up at home. But the last time I was there, you know, it was everywhere I went was 20 mile an hour limits, you know, and, and and a bike that you can use to get from A to B and, and look stylish on and enjoy and, and, and you know, is, is, is responsive and reactive when you ride it. And, and, you know, the way that the bike delivers that, so the torque is really good for, for the engine. It's, it's just got a really nice little drive all the way through. And, yeah. and so, you know, yes, there's that number there, but to be honest, I think it kind of almost misses the point to look at it really. I agree. I, I would challenge anybody who does just look at that uh, to, to go and ride it because yeah. the, the, the clutch lever is light, the throttle action from, from low revs is, is positive and it's, and it's hearty and it's good for those sort of low speed. And the, the chassis is really nicely chassis rigid, is great, isn't, it? isn't it? Really Absolutely. good. The tyres, even, you know, the, it's an Indian manufactured tyres that probably not many people will have heard of, but over the 50 odd miles that we've done today, they've been fantastic. They're really good. So we, we work with Sayat to develop those tyres specifically for this bike. So our uh, test rider team, you know, chaps like uh, Paul Young, um, you know, who are gurus at doing that, um, you know, work closely with Sayat. And, and, and I think because they're, they're a slightly smaller brand, we've been able to build that relationship with them and, and, and actually make sure that we get what we needed for the bike. Um, and I, yeah, the chassis is great. I mean, I, on the launch video that you see with Sid Arthur, we filmed it in Wales, and while Sid was doing his stuff to camera, I basically stole the other bike and, and just played up and down the Black Mountain Road. There's the, 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 the end of it, which is really twisty, and, and it was brilliant. I was going past loads of quicker stuff, and, and the chassis on there is just fantastic. So although it's, it's not about that at all, you know, it can absolutely do that. And, and where, from a consumer point of view, that comes in is 
when you're in the city and there's there's a there's a gap and you want to go for it and you want to get in and out of something it's just it's a really nice responsive agile little chassis which is great who's your customer i know that it's a2 compliant but is yeah. that the market you're going for as i say depending on the markets that we're talking about so globally many many different customers you know so our customer in india is going to be a very very different customer to our customer in europe um i think a2 is an obvious market but i think more than that i think it's for again people that are looking for affordable accessible usable everyday transport that is more than just everyday transport that you know bikes need to move you then it take you somewhere not just physically but emotionally and, and and it does that it's got that lovely sound it's got that lovely engine character and so anyone that's looking for that that kind of that experience so i don't think you need to be an a2 character i think for some people it'll be a second bike for some people it'll be you know as i say transport you know, especially in those those settings where you get from a to b i think um you know it, it has lots of potential for lots of people so we're hoping it will be a younger demographic um as well as as you know the the, the a2 thing but, but customers that have already got bikes but are just looking at something that, that they can use every day, you know. And at less than £4,000, it's such an attractive proposition, That's isn't it? it? When you look at it and you, you start, you know, poking your nose around all the little uh, parts of the bike and having a nose here, there and everyone, you, you kind of, you really appreciate the quality, the build quality and how much has gone into it. And, uh, you know, it blows me away that it's, it's only 3,800 quid or something. Absolutely. I mean, and that's, that's been a real push for the product because obviously, you know, the markets globally are different, so we've got to make it work in all those markets. But the expectations are going up in all markets, and so getting that quality level was, was absolutely key. Brilliant. Mate, thank you so much thank for your you time. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thanks very much. There we have it. Uh, so you've learned all about the bike. Uh, you've seen the bike in action. Uh, all that remains is for you to go and try it. Give it a whirl, see what you think. Let us know uh, in the comments. If you've got any questions, let us know in the comments. But thank you so much for joining us, and, uh, and we'll see you next time.